So next up is Kano. So you might recognize this, the X-Pat, which is the MKX version. Here's the MKX-I and close enough to the chest piece and he's wearing blue. You can't change the color of his eye and the chest thing to green or yellow and such, which is weird. You think that'd be a thing you'd be able to do. I think it would've been cool if there were more color options and that was a thing you could customize for Kano, but yeah, that's all we have. Looks pretty decent, uh, and, and I think I tried to set it up with the somewhat similar intros. I mean, you know, he's not going around firing his laser or drinking or pissing everywhere in MKX, so do more can to be somewhat similar. And fast bladed because it's similar to how his one of his fatalities goes, where he throws a knife at the opponent's throat and they fall onto it, which is actually a pretty good fatality. I should do actually one day do a video about here's all the fatalities from each game, which ones are good, which ones are bad. And it's like, well, this one's shit. It goes on for too long. This one's actually pretty good. Then we have On the Run, which is MK3. This one I tend to alternate between uh, MK3 and MK1. And that's kind of where the name On the Run comes from because his plot is in MK1 and 3 are that he's on the run from Sony and Jax. And I toned down a lot of his stuff, like here is his moves are focused on hand-to-hand -hand stuff rather than the laser stuff, because the laser stuff, I don't think he actually had any laser stuff until Deadly Alliance when it was just the eye, and then he got the chest one starting with MKX. But prior to that, his whole thing was cannonball and throwing knives. Pirate this game. <laughs> yeah, so just the pirate theme. I think it's a shame we can't get this without the pirate hat and some of those details because it's somewhat similar to what it was in MK vs DCU and Special Forces, which would be a, an interesting theme to go with, but this one's throwing fire bottles and using gas or whatever the fuck. I'm not really sure what he's doing in that bottom one. It kind of, just from the, the portrait, it kind of looks like he's making fart sounds with his armpit and it actually releases the smell, which I won't put it past this version of Kano because he's just gross. Then we have Odd Tech, the Osh Tech variant. I made this one just because of the pun, it's not really one that I think is uh, a, a major one, like a cornerstone of my customized versions of Kano. I also may notice that the icon is not white. I go for the white versions for all of them just to be uniform because it fits in better, but I don't have the white one because you get them at random and they made three different color versions of every single one just to pad out the, the rewards. And I fucking hate that. I can't stand that they did that. And then we have Who Now? Obviously a play on Su Hao. So we've got the green pants and uh, the red is a secondary color, like, like red dragon, so that works out well. And he's bald and shirtless and the, the, the face item is just whatever, but it's made to be, here's what Sue Howe's like, so he's got all the, the laser stuff. See, I'm paying respect to Sue Howe, even though he's not that, just think about this about the characters like that, is Sue Howe's the character who's so overly hated by the people who make the series that fans are more likely to not agree with them, but say, I'm fucking sick of it, I'm going to start singing this guy's praises just to spite you. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. You can tell I'm driven by spite because I also made pirate this game. I mean, I don't think pirating the game would actually do anything because the, the online connection that's required. And I'm not genuinely advocating for piracy, but it is a funny meme to be like, this game's shit, don't pay for it. <laughs> Cabal Sack is next. So straight away, here we have my first one, Burn Victim. This is an attempt at classic Cabal because you can't get the burnt version in the coat. You can get unburnt in a coat but you can't get burnt in a coat. And that's bullshit, I hate that. Fucking MK Mobile got it, but this doesn't. Then with Black Dragon, where I've toned down the speed stuff, you can't remove it entirely, but according to MK9, he didn't have his super speed until he got burned and got his upgrades from Kano. Maybe one can infer that the pipes here are supposed to indicate that he got the upgrades from Kano anyway, but it, it really just feels like they just fucked up or didn't care. Then with Nether Enforcer, where I've changed up his hook swords. I do that sometimes. It's not entirely 100% accurate to the way the character is in the story mode. I've just given him a different hook swords that convey the idea of like some kind of underworld minion better and isn't just literally the same as what he had in life, you know? I'm not sure why he chose these rusty ones, these rusty hook swords, instead of something more classic. I'm sure they have a, a, just a normal classic one, not, not this not this one where it's like weird and, and pointed. I mean, they say, they say this is classic, but it's not classic. That's not what it looked like originally. Like, it was closer to these, honestly. Mocaps decapitated, I guess, Cabal killed Mocap off screen. But this is like, in terms of the shape, this is the most accurate to the classic one. Mavado is dead. Still not ideal, but whatever. Then we have Speed Demon. This is one of the first I came up with just because of that play on words. And I think the mask and the glowing eyes go really well to make him look demonic. Like, honestly, you could take this exact design and put it in MK as a completely separate character. This guy is just some ghoul who shows up as a netherarm enforcer, and it's not Cabal. He's just some some dude, and it would work. And then the last one is Sea Hudsoni, which 
I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but basically that is the name of, because I'd heard about this before, that there's an insect that moves so fast, it has to stop moving in order to reorientate itself, because it's moved so fast it can't keep up. Which is honestly the way that I feel like a lot of writers, bad writers, tend to depict speedsters, like the Flash. It's like, he's moving so fast, he has to be able to react quickly enough. His brain has to move so really quickly. So when it's stuff like, oh, he runs into a nuclear explosion and dies, I'm like, to me, that doesn't make any sense. I feel like he should be able to see this stuff coming to some degree and perhaps react in time if he's that fast. But this bug is not like that. And so that's what the basis for this one is. I'm not sure if I chose the red specifically for any reason or if it's just whatever. I actually quite like this one. This is probably the best of the bug themed ones except for one which we'll get to later then we have Liu Kang and obviously ah, I see so you may notice that he's not wearing his armbands again I've not I've not gone back and, and re-customized all of these characters this is what he's supposed to have now the reason I didn't have them on was because if you watch the Deadly Alliance video I use this as the Deadly Alliance version of Liu Kang to represent the idea of him in that game dying because in that in the intro of Deadly Alliance he doesn't have his armbands on so yeah that's why but obviously if I'm gonna go for a default Liu Kang this is the way to go and I think this is one of the best renditions of his classic look I do slightly prefer the MK9 version but this is a good one then we have this as a close take on MK1 as you can tell from his born in China name like the the theme from Mortal Kombat the album from 1994 and for this one I've kind of toned down some of the nunchuck stuff and tried to be a bit more classic as usual like low fireball and stuff I mean I don't think MK1 you can had the low fireball but anyway so yeah black bandana to, to blend in because you can't remove it because there's a lot of things you can't remove for some reason but I think the black pants and white shoes combo is intentionally a reference to MK1 do you think it was just a black and white one the same way that this has like the red stripes along the pants this would have white but i think they intentionally made this as an mk1 reference which is one of the few that i can definitively look at and go that's probably a reference to this thing and not to some random bullshit where they made the character wear blue and pink and it looks awful fallen champion naturally 3d era deception and armageddon it's unfortunate that he has he can't wear shoes but whatever i emphasize the nunchucks because the introduction of weapons in deadly lights and deception as a full game mechanic like as, a, as an actual style you can get the nunchucks it makes sense to emphasize that I, I try to remove intros of which poses that have some kind of character to them i suppose i try to de-emphasize anything that, re that relates to his spirituality and such make him just like whether it works best for a mindless zombie thank you playstation thank you for exposing me for someone who fucking bought the avengers game for a tenner thanks good job guys what do you what do you mean <laughs> oh I'll get to that later. So then we have Fallen Hero. Now, on the surface, you look at that and go, that's just the normal Revenant. But if you look at what he's wearing on his arms and the difference in his headband, I am actually attempting a, a more MKX-styled version. If I could actually have 15 slots for Liu Kang, I would have this and the default Revenant as separate ones. But here's MKX. And I guess one of the things I want to try and do with a lot of these variants, like, because I, I want to have some variety because I've only got five, but if I had, like, 10 or 15, I would try and reflect the character's entire history like, like johnny cage shirtless there would be like three of those one that's just the, the classic with the wristbands a version of that with gloves to be mk trilogy and then a version of that that i showed you before the rebooted version but unfortunately you know mk11 has so many poor design decisions that you just don't have the option for that then we have cyber monk 2077 which is another one that exists just for the pun and i'm pretty sure this is based directly on johnny silverhand yeah i don't know if, I don't know if I have a specific reason for not giving him the gauntlets I think it's just to not cover up the tattoos, although I think the cyber arm does lose a little something from not having gauntlets on. So let's fix that right now. Give him some cool gauntlets. I mean, that's the one that he's supposed to have with it, so fuck it, he can have that. Yeah, that looks bloody cool. Wake the fuck up, Earthrealmer. We've got an, a tournament to win or some cringe shit like that. Some people might look at this and think it's the McFarlane Toys figure, the only one they did shirtless for some reason. They never did a normal colours version of that. No, this is just generally yellow and black Bruce Lee. And I think it looks slightly better here. This is basically Onslaught Liu Kang, only you can't get the actual colour of the headband. It's either red with silver or black with red, not black with silver. I wish Onslaught Liu Kang looks a bit more different though. Just something a bit less MK11. Katana. Which one I use as the default classic katana does change every so often because I don't really care for the, the bodysuit. Uh, the little cape thing is 
it adds a bit more to it, although I think the, the exposed shoulder just doesn't really work. I think if this was more uh, symmetrical, it would have worked a little better. But there's a reason I don't use the version with the skirt anymore for this. But Katana Karnam is basically MK11 Katana, but slightly redesigned. Then we have Dark Empress, which like Liu Kang is an attempt at the MKX style, which you can tell from the mask and the less armor. And, you know, it tries to reflect that in some of the intros, like she's not being carried by Outworlders because she's associated with the Netherrealm and stuff like that. Then we have Warrior Queen, which is, well, what if she was the Queen of Edenia and was just going around kicking people's asses and protecting Edenia on her own terms. This would probably have been used as a Melina variant if Melina was not added to the game. Because I did actually have, I think I had one originally, but it wasn't using this skin, it was using this. It was like Revenant Melina. But this, this, this works better as a Melina, but that's not what I'm going for. They, okay, so what this is, is this is for a video about MK Chronicles when I was talking about Tarantula, one of my original characters who shows up in that. You, you should definitely check out Chronicles, all those videos. I'm pretty sure I'll discuss who she is in the video. She's like a revenant designed by Quan Chi to protect him. But that's not what this, this skin is supposed to be. That, that was just, again, because they didn't have enough slots and needed to make some room. This is the one, what it's supposed to be. Because I actually quite like that mask. It doesn't necessarily fit a normal katana, but as an alternate show. And yeah, fantastic. You may recall, I have a show called Fantastic, which has about three episodes, because I've only got one other idea for it, which I'm sure they probably make in the new year. But yeah, this is basically a, a reference to one of my YouTube shows, and it will not be the last. Now, for some reason, I forgot to actually talk about this in the original recording, but this is Female Chameleon. I chose the more exposed version with the flat because it's the more classic style, and you can't get all grey, so green green will do because green is the Saurian colour. When you look at the Armageddon render for Chameleon, her colour is green, so yeah, that works quite well. So I was surprised to realise that it's not the full body cat suit that she was in the story mode that they used a recolor of for the ending where she and Liu Kang are together at the dawn of time. It's the one with more skin showing. It may look better with some glowy fans just to imply, you know, god powers, but it, it works either way. Next up, Kung Lao, by default. Unfortunately, I, I can't do much to fix this. Kung Lao has a very shit skin selection. Fortunately, with MK Onslaught, they actually have gone some ways to fix it. If you've seen the way he appears in Onslaught, it's, it's either this one or this one. And they've recolored it. So the top is black and the pants are blue. So it's his classic color scheme. Like this outfit, if it had those colors, would be a, a decent alternate take on the MK2 style. Probably more like a, it's like an updated MK2 version rather than an updated Shaolin Monks version, the way MK9 did. But... Alas, we don't have that here. It would be cool if they added those skins into this when Onslaught comes out. Maybe the way that certain skins in MKX were locked behind connected to MK Mobile. Maybe they could do something like that here. And it's like, we can get these skins by playing Onslaught. Unfortunately, we don't have anything like that. So Kung Lao is stuck with this. If I could fully customize his colors and give him black and blue, I would absolutely do that. The closest I could really get for that would be Earth Defender because his second color scheme gives him blue pants again. Again, a Defender of the Realm, but he's wearing the MK3 outfits, which, you know, Netheram never does repeat DLCs, but I, I guess the fact that he's got a shaved head instead of the mullet from MK3 does technically make this a new skin, so I, I guess you can't use that as evidence, you know. But again, it's classic style, and yeah, have, throwing the hat to where it, the blade is vertical rather than horizontal, that's an MK3-ism, so that's why I went for that here. Uh, Mirrored Fate. Ah, oh, yes, it's called that because in the original timeline, he also got killed and brought back under mind control, and so it's like a, a nod to the fact that it happened again. <laughs> As you might be able to tell from the gauntlets and the fact that he's not got the full armor, this is also an attempt at the MKX version. And the same reason I chose this hat, because it's segmented. It's not quite as extreme as the, the Revenant one in MKX for that one variation, but he does use that in the story mode. Uh, but that's as close as you can get to the MKX version. If you could fully control the colors and get rid of the red, that would work better, but alas, no. Kung Lineage, this is the one with the Kung Lao moves, like the great Kung Lao mo uh, moves where you can summon his ancestor like a stand, and it's uh, the soul version. So it's like his ancestor's soul has joined him in combat. I think it works pretty well. It's a pretty cool idea. And speaking of the ancestor here's the, the original kung lao i don't know if he is missing an ability because the game just fucked it up or if i chose it that way i made a few uh, changes like i think he doesn't have any gauntlets on in the actual story but i've given him that here i've said it before on, on twitter i don't think i said it in a video but you know you look at mk9 and how it ended with 
Well, you really go back to Armageddon. Armageddon's like, yeah, the, we'll have to figure out a new solution because Armageddon's going to happen faster now because of everyone's gotten more powerful. That was never followed up on. MK vs. DCU, look at its endings, it was setting up potentially something new. Probably not, but you could follow that up with a sequel. Didn't go anywhere. MK9 ends with Shinnok and Quan Chi being set up. What happens? Shinnok is, is beaten in the first chapter, and then we jump forward 20 years, and while they are still the threat of the game, we spend a lot of time not focusing on them because we're busy with this outworld plot, which I don't begrudge the existence to the outworld plot or the focus on it but that's not what was being set up really and basically mkx is, the le is less egregious of this than what we saw where mkx was like yeah revenant and dark raiden and then the next game's like oh yeah dark raiden's gone in the second chapter and the revenants are just cronies for chronica i could find a play on words for crony and chronica by combining them but i i, I nah so mk11 aftermath being like oh yeah uh Liu Kang and the Great Kung Lao. Unless they do a spin-off game as Shaolin Monks 2 about Fire God Liu Kang and the Great Kung Lao going on adventures, that's not going to be the major focus. We're not going to get a game set in the past. MK12 will at best do one chapter about the Great Kung Lao, probably kill him off, but maybe not, and then move on to the present where we see all the classic characters. Anyone who thinks that the Great Kung Lao is going to be the focus, like his generation will be the focus of MK12, is fucking delusional. I'm sorry, you just don't know what you're talking about. It would be interesting to see that happen. A vastly different roster, though they wouldn't do it. They'd be like, oh, they find some way to have Scorpion and Sub-Zero be around sooner. Like, what if Takeda didn't exist and Scorpion did instead? Or maybe they'll do something a bit more interesting. Like, what if Takeda became Scorpion instead of Hanzo doing that? I feel like long-term fans would riot. Well, you know, the fanboys rather would riot. And so it's not going to happen. I would love to be proven wrong. It would be interesting to be proven wrong in a positive way when it comes to MK for once. But I've ranted about this long enough. Let's move on. Next is Jade. And so right off the bat, yes, the Royal Confidant is a replacement for the existing version. I'd rather it not have the hood. So occasionally I do go to this one. This is the one that that MK Miniatures collection that Angry Joe was working on that seems to have fallen by the wayside. That's what that version was. And I think... I think she wears this in Onslaught as well. I prefer the way this one looks. I like the leather style uh, compared to just the, the basic fabrics. I, it's just, I wish you could take the, the hood off and then it'd be like a really classic jade, but it's fine. Then we have Nether Agent. This one is just the Netherrealm version. Just, this is just her as a Revenant and that's it. I didn't, because she wasn't in MKX. So there's no Revenant version to try and recreate there. Mournful is one of the first ones I came up with. So MKX, you'll re probably recall that Katana had a Mournful variant that gave her Jade's weapons. So this is now a take on that. It's Jade dressed in blue to honor her friend and using... She can't use a fan, but this is very similar to Katana's fan. And so I wonder if that was the intent. But yeah, that's what I was going for with this. And so her intro and victory animations emphasize the fan rather than the staff. Then we have Oshtek Queen. This is just her when she's, you know, married to Kotal. It's a decent skin, so I'm using it. Although I do, I do find it suspect that Yo, th this is the one out of that set of four characters with those Oshtek skins. The only one to not have the toes exposed. Come on, guys. It, uh, three, three men, one woman, only the men get it. Come on. L let, let's be equal. Have some equality for once in your fucking games. You know, what's okay for one group is not okay for the other. Guys, come on. Fan service for men is fine if you have fan service for women. Let's just... <laughs> Then we have Wicked Witch. Sometimes I'll swap this out for... Sometimes a classic skin, but I usually swap it out for this one. No, this one. And be like, this is female chameleon, but like what her, her true form is. I'm like, this is what she would look like in a modern game, if not for the transparent look. Yeah, I feel like if, if female chameleon was redesigned, not in the 3D era, but now, they'd go for something like this, something a bit more classic style, rather than something really out there. But yeah, this one is the uh, the Wicked Witch one. It's just a really good skin. I think it, it just works really well. Uh, also, this one does expose the toes. That makes this objectively better than this one. <laughs> Am I going too far with this bit? Possibly. Let's see what other jades I will make and then move on. The other approach I sometimes take with jade, but this one's specifically the Onslaught version. So next we have Robert Cop. So right off the bat, I've, I've recolored him from grey to blue. That's what I associated more as. I did have a figure of him, which admittedly was a, a battle damage version, but his armor was blue. I think he went to blue in like Robocop 2 or something, but I feel like that's why I associate more with him, blue rather than grey. And I kept the grey for Murphy's Law. I get it, Murphy's Law. <laughs> but for the battle damage one, I think grey works better for that, while blue is like the more proper him. Protect and Sever, also, yes. 
I did steal that from that, that one Treehouse of Horror episode of The Simpsons. I did steal it from the You Can't Stop Me. Then we have Remade, which is inspired by the remake. Probably the only tribute to the remake anyone playing MK11 would ever make. I've not seen the movie, but I thought, fuck it, why not? Then I went for I Am The Law, Judge Dredd reference. I think it actually works pretty well. And then I've given him like Ricochet and the Flamethrower as nods to the Ricochet bullets that the Lawgiver has. And also Hi-X. Not Hi-X. Well, I mean, incendiary rounds. Hi-X is the explosive one. But he does use both of those in Dread, the movie. And I was very happy. To, I, you don't know how happy I was to watch Dread and see Dread's explosive shots be Hi-X and not Grenade. Like, Grenade is just a dumbed down version of it, I feel, for the Stallone movie. And then, you know, here we have actual Hi-X. Hayek's, as portrayed in Judge Dread, Dread vs. Death. A very good first-person shooter. Check that out. Then we have Cyber Initiative. I'll use any random colour scheme for this one. I might end up actually at some point replacing Remade with another one and having this, having Smoke and Sector or Cyrax or maybe Cyber Sub-Zero. I actually used this when I did a video that was what Sub-Zero's chapter could have been in MK11 where it was this to represent Cyber Sub-Zero, which was better than what I originally used, where it was like a customized cabal. I do find it weird that you look at some of these helmets like, this helmet does not match. I don't know why they did that. Some of the helmets just don't match color scheme wise. And so it just stands out. Some of them are just, just great. But then this one, it's like, why has it got a brown helmet with gold armor? Like, what, what, what are you doing, guys? But yeah, there's not really much else I could do with Robocop, so... I guess I'll just move right along to Scarlet. Now with Scarlet, this is an attempt at a classic style Scarlet. Obviously you can't go fully classic because that doesn't fit the current aesthetic, but this is just an attempt at MK9 and that's why, you know, she comes in from the from the blood like she did in MK9. So that's what I was going for with that. And she is secret weapon because that's what she was originally. She was Shao Kahn's secret weapon. Rumor red because, you know, play on words, but also because Scarlet was a rumoured character, at least by UMK3. I think it was Ermac existing after all the, all the rumours of this red ninja named Ermac led to people saying, well, there must be a female version. I like the detail of the red hair, even though we all know she wouldn't have had red hair if she debuted back then. Although, actually, because they did recolour the actress to be black, to be Jade, so it is possible they could have redone the hair just to make her distinct from Katana and Melina. Then there's Blood Code, which is the comic version from the MKX comic. I have her with the Kamidogu of Chaos. I'm not sure if that's exactly what the design is in the game, but it, using one of those, in the comic rather, using one of those Kamidogu, yes, it, it, it fits. And uh, this one just kind of emphasizes the Kamidogu and the blood magic. So yes, that's what I was focusing on there. And then the abilities of blood magic. Even though she doesn't use blood magic in the comic, that was what she was trying to learn from Havoc. MK11 retconned that, but she couldn't use blood magic back then. But this is like, what if she used the Kamidogu? Which is kind of weird when you think about it. Like She only uses it to stab Cassie and infect her. She probably did that to Jackie as well. But that's all she uses it for. So it's kind of unusual that, that they didn't have the blood character use one of the Kamidogu, which are now blood daggers. Iron Blood Orphan, a metal style, like metal colours, and Iron Blooded Orphans, the, uh, the the Gundam series. I don't watch Gundam, but I thought it was a, a fun little reference, so there you go. Then we have Ruby. Now, this is not strictly a reference to Ruby, the character who appeared in Defenders of the Realm. This is something else that I'm planning to use this for an upcoming video. I originally had this design for her, but I switched it to this, because it's like more like Scarlet colour scheme. But I do quite like the way this looks, but I'm sticking with this. And it is a shame that you can't use this hairstyle with like one of these outfits as we originally saw when the character was first shown off for the game and you see in the ending for the arcade mode for Scarlet. Unfortunately, we can't do that, but yeah. Scarlet from Onslaught. Again, the colours are more vibrant in Onslaught, it seems. And they also gave her like bright red eyes, really stand out. And Eren, well, just the default look, I have given him his classic MKX mask and hat just to differentiate him from the Black Dragon version who has the same hat and mask as well. I could have given him the, the the hat he wears in the main story mode. For some reason, he changes hats between that and Aftermath. I don't know why it was done that way, but it is. And yeah, so these are all having a theme, Black Dragon, Black Immortal, Black Hunter. So this is like a, a Bounty Hunter style one. So he's got an intro that where he shows the uh, Bounty Hunter poster, Black Shot. Uh, black smoke. These are all just like different themes I'm going for, just the ones that look kind of cool. You'll see uh, the reason for this in that same video that I'll, I'll be featuring Ruby in, so look out for that. So the only bonus I have for Eren Black is with the hat he wears in the story mode, not Aftermath, the normal story mode. Again, I don't know why he wears a different hat, but he does. Then we have Devora. Keep the default for the hive. It's fine. Uh, then we have Firefly. You might not understand the reference, but this is the Order Realm skin 
and the main character for Order Realm is Hotaru, whose name comes from the Japanese word Hotaru, which means Firefly. And that's the reference I'm going for here. I thought it was clever. Shut up. Then we have Al Sheva. So Al Sheva is a former queen of the Kaitin. She is the one whose body you see. I'm not sure if both the one you see in, in the crypt and in the background of the hive stage as opposed to the same one or if they're different ones but it's mentioned that she was the last queen i think when the anya kyles were conquered we, f we find a note about that in the crypt i believe and so this is just what she could have been because i like this armored look and so it's like this is what she could have been before transforming into the queen through some kind of process that's why her intros and richard poses are focused on babies because she was a queen Arvital, I'm using this skin specifically because Arvital is a, a character of reference in a mirror match intro that Devora has, where Arvital is another member of the Hive who left to go on a mission and going off the intro, the idea that she's come back as some kind of traitor. So with her, I have made her as a character. She also appears briefly in MK Chronicles at the end of a chapter. She's basically the future of the hive that Devore is protecting after the last one was wiped out, that they were two of the only survivors. Nurse Wretched, just because it's a, a different type of skin. An evil nurse, you might look at that and go, why? But then you look at the pincers with the, the syringes and you're like, okay, that makes complete sense. I'm completely on board. You son of a bitch, I'm in. I, I, I did a Rick and Morty meme. Am I cool yet, Dad? Then we have Kotal Khan, or Scrotal Khan, as I like to call him. Lawful Emperor. The best name I could think of. He is technically lawful. He's lawful evil, though. Uh, he's kind of a cunt. Then we have Blood Sacrifice. So this one's themed around all the blood stuff, as best as I can. That's why he's glowing red and all that stuff. Animality. I think, yeah, originally it was called Black Panther, and, he, and it was using this... It might be this skin. I'll, another of the other ones where he's wearing black body paint. I think it was this one. But then I thought, well, do this and theme it around animality. But yeah, the moves and intros and victories are all focused on the animality stuff. Plus a few extras, but yeah. And then we have Guardian of Light, which is all light focused. And the name obviously comes from the Guardian of Light Lara Croft game. But there aren't enough characters to fit light. So I had to change the light to a different kind of light, unfortunately. And then we have... Unholy Union, because there's an intro between Kotal and Devora where it's heavily implied that they fucked, and so I like to imagine that the baby that is in one of Devora's intros is in fact this child who then pops up and says, Hey, Papa, I I'm, I'm ready to learn the ways of, of my people, and Kotal's like, uh, Get away from me, you fucking freak. And so that's why he had to be wearing yellow, because if you, well, be yellow because if he was red it wouldn't fit Devora. so if he's yellow it's like oh shit that's Devora's son that's fucked up ew gross it's a shame we never got a playable character of the male whatever the, the bug people are called i forget right now it's a shame we never got kitin that's it we never got the male one because there was content out on that for mkx i think it might have been for this one i think it was for mkx and that's a way more buggish uh, and it's quite cool it reminds me of that mantis xenomorph figure that i had i think i still got it actually and it reminds me of that and that was cool this is one of the Onslaught designs that has not been made public yet. It's only on the website in a secret render, and they've removed the fur skin cap, but otherwise it is exactly the same design. I don't know why they made that specific change. I assume to reduce the polygons. They did that in MKX as well with the MK2 Lady Ninjas. But weapon colour aside, you can make it here. Al Shiva. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I originally called it like... I step on me or Yas Queen as a piss take then I thought why did NRS do this and so she's got the stomps it makes sense to do that here so this is third champion a nod to her being the third champion at least in the original timeline the second timeline kind of did away with that but she's kind of the third champion of the show cam. so this is as close to mk3 shiva as you can get i think that's that's what they were going for with this outfit that's by default red you know matching the modern sensibilities of the series i mean you could have just redesigned it a bit instead of making it something completely different but i think this is supposed to be the mk3 one just done armageddon is an attempt at the Armageddon version. I didn't focus her on the shield, which is a weapon, because I used that here, Royal Guard, which is all shield focused. Now you might have figured out why she's wearing all blue and has the helmet, because as well as being, you know, the Royal Guard idea and, uh, and being shield focused, she's also Captain America. Shiva is now is a new Captain America. She'd probably make a better Captain America than some of the Captain Americas who've come since. Uh, but I, I think uh, she, she don't, honestly, she, in terms of character, she's probably closer to Captain Marvel, where she's like, I need to be a female icon, which means shitting on men constantly, because that's what a female icon is, even though I'm pretty sure most women don't like that. Fuck you. 
Then we have Queen Mai, Goro's mother, Queen Gorbak's Qu Queen Go Queen Gorbak, King Gorbak's wife. Uh, Queen Mai was only referenced, I think Goro's MK1 comic bio referenced her as his mother. I think it was brought up there, uh, and she was referenced in the MKX comic as having set up the tournament that Shiva won to become the queen. I don't know why Queen Mai didn't step up after Gorbak died. No explanation was given. Maybe she's just not the fighting type and she feels like the Shokan need a powerful warrior to bring them back after this humiliation. That is a possibility. And that is probably what the intent was, but the comic itself makes no explanation. So with, with her, I, I emphasize with the intro, like, you know, make way and the ones that have other Shokan because she's the queen. I, I could have called her Yas Queen as, the, as a joke, but I won't be able to easily convey it's Queen Mai specifically and not just Shiva in a wig. Also, why did they change her hair color, Shiva? That's weird. That's weird that they did this. Why? Although, I guess having more redheads in a modern Western franchise is a good thing, given how many we lose in the adaptation to Hollywood. Um, yeah. Then we have John Rambo. My intention originally was to try and reference... I think I had it, like, one was it based on Expendables, and the rest were all references to each of the Rambo films. Well, the only Rambo films I've seen are First Blood and Rambo, so I couldn't make that many specific references. So this is just him from First Blood when he comes home. Hence, Homecoming is the name. Uh, it's not intentional that he's wearing the green army jacket and it's called Homecoming, like Alex Shepard from Silent Hill Homecoming. That's not what I was going for, I swear. I just realised that now. No, it is... And he's even got combat roles and shit. Damn it. Uh, but no, this is uh, purely based around First Blood. As is this one. This is called First Blood and it's got all the traps and stuff. So this is when he's, you know, laying all these traps. Expendable. The name is just a reference. This is based on whichever Rambo he, he kills the guy with the explosive bow was in. I think it was Rambo 2, but yeah, it, it's, it's not too specific. Worst Nightmare. Oh, I think this is Rambo 2 and this is Rambo 3. I think that's what I was going for. And that's why he's got Bow Hunter for a victory pose. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Whereas I think there was enough material in Rambo 2 that the intros and victory poses all work. And that's the one we does the gun thing, yeah. Then Virtuous Mission, this one is based around Metal Gear Solid 3. So he's got uh, big guns, he's got combat rolls, he can uh, pick up animals and eat them to, to get some health back, like this was eating animals to get stamina. That's my favourite one, that's the one I use the most. If you have Rambo and you're mostly having him go into the towers and use an AI to do it, don't give him the ability to, to... Yeah, that's the reason I don't have that for this one. I don't have him being able to go prone, even though that would be an obvious reference for Metal Gear Solid, because the AI will just abuse it and do nothing with it. Same goes for the Terminator, and I think Sindel's flying abilities, because Terminator can run forward, and it's like, he's going to charge in and do nothing. The AI is brain dead in this game, even though it usually wins matches. Fuck you. So, by default, he's the Model 101, the Terminator 2 version, and then we have Dark Fate. That should be the alternate. I get why it's the default. But go for classic, even though admittedly the classic looks less like Arnie than the, the Dark Fate one does. Then we have Cyber Organism, because he's a cybernetic organism, but I couldn't fit the name in. So he's all the Terminator stuff. He's, he's gone more futuristic, like with the glasses and the, the gun. And he becomes a Terminator when he's defeated and he's got all that shit. That's it. Wasn't my movie. So this, I'm not sure why I've got him in the blue, sh the blue shirt when the, the reference works better with like this one or something. But... I think I didn't in like Cage's gym originally, but yeah. So what that one was a reference to is in the MK1 comic, ironically, Kano, the guy inspired by the Terminator, attacks Johnny Cage on the boat and he's like, go on Cage, say it, say it, I'll be back. And Johnny's like, that wasn't my movie. So it's like, this is a, a Johnny Cage themed one. So he's, he's more of a brawler. He's got Cage's gym. He's got the MK1-ish sunglasses. Uh, yeah, why Kano fucked that up, I don't know. Maybe he's just being a dick intentionally. Cassie and the Terminator with Johnny Cage references. And then I struggled for the longest time to come up with a fifth one. I think when it, even when I did the MK11 critique, I hadn't come up with one. But then I thought, Heal to the king, baby. Moves are just whatever, but this is a reference to Duke Nukem. Because, did I say Duke Nukem? Bloody hell. Um, uh, because there is artwork of him, as well as having his red tank top, he has like a brown coat on. And so the best I could come, best I could come up with was, Duke, 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 Duke. 
and that's it. I've got no other ideas for Terminator, which I should. I should have more ideas for the Terminator, considering how, how much I used to love that franchise before it went completely off the rails and went shit. But, unfortunately, I have very few ideas for him. I had more ideas for the fucking Collector than I did for Terminator. So let's move on to the other robot, who should have been the one who is the slavery character, not Jax, Garrus. So, I could have gone for a Doomfist style thing, but I, I, I stopped playing Overwatch before Doomfist was added, I'm pretty sure. Or... He might have been added, but I, just, I barely used him. So we just have Living History. I forget if that's one of the default names or one I came up with, but I think it's the default name. Augmented, just him from the end of the game. I forget what his fist actually is, but I do like to have some variety when I'm making these. The gear system was not utilized anywhere near well enough when they did the story mode. Like, every time a character is using a different costume, they should have different gear. Only a few times is that actually made use of. It's bullshit. Chronica's Monster. Like Frankenstein's monster again. I couldn't put in the apostrophe. I'm, I'm sorry. The game is bullshit. But here's just a monster. It's pretty good. And then we have a line through time. So he's got the red references. He's all focused on time. Yes, this is another one of the ones that is made based on uh, one of my sh my shows. A line through time. The the, the classic. I. <sighs> I actually had a couple for Noob originally. I had one that was based on parallel plots where he's got like orange lines on. And I think I had another one. I think I think it had a Kano one themed around Cannonball or considered it but never went went through with it. And then we have Apocalyptic, which is Garrus. Okay. Get, get. Yes, of course he's Garrus. They're all Garrus, but this is also Darkseid. And so for this one, I have to be careful with the intros. Like, Darkseid's head rolling back onto his body doesn't really fit. So, stepping down from somewhere. As long as he's not doing stuff that, that doesn't really mesh, like bowing to Kronika, I think it works. Okay, actually... Could you imagine if they did this intention, like, oh yeah, look, our our villain is better than DC's. Look how DC's villain bows down to our villain, and she places a hand on his head because he is subservient to her. If they did an MK vs DCU two, it genuinely would not surprise me if Chronic was included as, a, as the villain who is responsible for it. Because apparently she did create MK vs DCU in a past timeline. I think that's one of the dumbest things that any of the writers said. Like that should not be canon. That's stupid. And now we move on to the Collector. So, by default, we just have Tribute Taker. Then we have Coastal's Captive. Just when he's imprisoned, he has a few less options. Scavenged Armor, which is just him in armor, because why not? Crypt Keeper. So, this is what the version of him featured in MK Chronicles would look like. I'm going to talk about him in a future video. Not the same one as Eren and Scarlet, but, but it will be in a future video where I'll discuss it, and you'll have a better understanding of why he's called the Crypt Keeper. It's probably not difficult to figure out. Then, God of Gold. So, this one is themed around the... Naknaden's statue where you tribute gold to get stuff in the crypt. You know, the one where you quickly run out of things to get with it, but it's just sat there and there's nothing else to do with it. He's themed around that. I think they should have done that, actually. Instead of just giving him... Did he get one in the gold set? No, he, he didn't get one in the gold combat league set. He got one in the, the filth-covered one, whatever that theme was supposed to be, and one in, like, the weird, like, time god theme. He should have gotten one in the gold one. One where he's wearing gold armor, one where he's just all gold, like the statue. You know, it's just weird shit. Like, here's the blood theme. Scarlet's going to get a skin in black and red, even though she already has black and red by default for all of her costumes. Not Kotal, the character who actively uses blood magic. He doesn't get a, a blood theme skin. But, but no, Aaron Black's going to get one. It's, it's stupid. It's not a new version of Collector, but I did come up with a better name for it instead of God of Gold. It's Buying Time. Yeah. Then we have Sindel. So the default is this one. This one I came up with before we saw what the default, the canonical version was going to look like in Aftermath, because Aftermath wasn't announced yet. So this is her back when Idenia was conquered. This is what she would have looked like. White, I think, works to imply like a, a more pure, somewhat fragile character, you know, because she, she killed herself to escape Shao Kahn because she couldn't deal with it. Then we have Empress of Evil, which is pure MK3. She's got all the flying shit. Uh, this is the MK3 version. Then we have Queen Mother, which is the Revenant. I think at some point I did have a version where she's wearing less armor and she was in black and she was supposed to reflect the MKX version. But then Aftermath made its canonical version and I wanted to have a version of that for easy use in killing her in, in videos as needed. Uh, the Bride of Khan. And then we have Sindel Khan and her Shao Khan themed one. So she's got more focus on the Banshee and arcane magic and stuff. And she it's a Black Dragon themed one, but it, but it fits for this so well. Also... Dead ass. Um, this one is a rough approximation of the MKX version of Sindel. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you if she was black or purple. I feel like in my head it changes every time I see her. But yeah, then we have Melina. And Melina, so I don't even have the default version in this. So this is Black Widow. This is a Tanya themed skin, her take on the mournful concept. 
Here she is with, her moves aren't really themed around anything in particular, but she has the mask on to cover up her face to be more beautiful, to resemble Tanya more. And this is her tribute to her dead lover. And that's why I don't have the, the default version because I've got other stuff to go first. Regal Reflection, I've, I've used this for MK. Hang on, do, no, I don't have the MK2 version still because it's only available at certain times in the Crypt store. And since I've long stopped checking the game out every day to see what's in the store, because there's very rarely anything there for me, uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just never going to get the MK2 version. It's just never going to happen because this game is fucking dog shit in the way it structures its collectibles. So I'm just stuck with the UMK3 version and that's it. Reincarnated. Haha, <laughs> got him. Obviously a Shao Kahn themed one. Uh, I gave her this mask because I really like th this mask. I, by default, it's not nothing special, but it goes well with Shao Kahn's face mask and like it hides the teeth behind it. If you would stop moving Melina so I can show the good people what this mask is like. So that's what I went with there. Actually, what would this look like with one of those uh, masks with the lips on? Where is it? Here we go. I mean, it, it kind of works with the limited color options. It, it's not ideal. Uh, then we have Savage Carnival. Yes, I did I, I did the same pun. Fuck you. Uh, so this one, you can tell from the flesh on her hands and the outfit I've chosen. This is her as more of a savage. That, so her intros and stuff are more focused on that stuff. You know, she's got the one where she is already eating someone. And so it works really... No, no, don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> but it's her being a savage, yes. Carbon Kotal. C Carbon Katana, rather. Ugh. That, hmm. So th this is just obviously the katana themed one. And so her, her, her intros are trying to pretend to be her. Except, except the part where she's killing katana's guys. But she's not doing stuff that katana can't do. And she's not showing off. No, she's got this one where she takes the mask off. That's the only one she's got. And this one. Uh, the name Carbon Katana came from, of all things, Crash of the Titans. Because when you played co-op in that game, player two was Carbon Crash. A recolor of Crash. For the sequel, they replaced that with Coco. But yeah, so that's where I got the name from. Carbon Katana. The, where she's imitating Katana. I don't know if this one's supposed to be evocative of Chameleon, her original design, but it's weirdly dark, almost black in a lot of spots. So it seemed like maybe it wasn't, but this one works for a Chameleon who has decided to just use one character's abilities instead of two. This is Melina's second costume in Onslaught. The pink is a bit brighter, but that's just how that game generally works with its aesthetic. The colors are a lot more vibrant and sometimes it looks quite ugly. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure the Onslaught gloves are in MK11 though. I couldn't find them. Then, oh shit, ah, stretch run. I thought pressing down on Melina would take me down terrain, but it doesn't. I had to move in to do that. So Cetrion, right off the bat, we have the Goddess of Life. She, she's made out to be like the Goddess of Good or Light, which is dumb. I view as more she's a Goddess of Life and Shenok is a God of Death. Because the way I, I view the Elder Gods, that they, their elements are greater aspects of reality. The kind of stuff you see in the Infinity Stones rather than on Avatar The Last Airbender, if that makes any sense. Then we have New Era Guardian, where she is the not augmented, like a weird, like semi-corrupted version. I don't know what the intent is other than it looks like Autumn, I guess, kind of. But yeah, that's, that's what they went with. I don't know why they didn't just have it stylistically fit with everyone else who gets augmented by Kronika. Like Frost, The Revenants, Garrus, they all get this very specific style, but Cetrion doesn't. Why? Then we have this one, which is similar, but it's Jinsei infused. So I think what really gives it away is the Jinsei is the blue glow and specifically those rocks behind her. Because that's very similar to like the floor of the, and the rocks and stuff of the Jinsei chamber. So what if she went to the Jinsei chamber and powered up? This. I really like the crystalline skins. I, w I wish that had been what they went for instead of the burnt look. Because, like, the crystal just works. I may maybe should change the headgear to something else just so it's a bit more different from New Era Guardian, but yeah, it's fine. Then we have Autumn Goddess. Does anyone else remember this? That when Cetron was first shown off, she she had red hair. I'm not sure if it was this skin or if it was the default, but with red hair. But I swear she had red hair when she was first shown off. But this is a, an autumn theme. Also, yeah, I'm trying to I tried to theme these around, um, sometimes around the elements. This is just whatever. This one, it's, uh... But it's been powerful. This one is water themed. This one is wind themed because autumn. And then we have Shinnok's sister. So I took the Pharaoh skin and made it more like a, a, Sh a Shinnok thing, a Nether Realm themed. So the headgear is designed to reflect Shinnok. I'm not sure if there's a specific reason for choosing that back piece. If it's just like Shinnok trying to merge all the realms and that reflects the realms. And then, you know, fiery blades on chains. Very Scorpion ish. And since he got that from the Nether Realm, I don't care what Nether Realm Studios may think. He clearly got that when he died and became a, a Spectre. That fits with the Shinnok aesthetic. I think it looks quite good. I'm pretty sure this was the first skin they showed off for Cetrion. In some ways, it's better. I think the skin stands out better with the warmer colors. 
but for a general nature god, you know, more cool colours, greens and blues fit better overall. Fujin. So for the, some of these, I actually made up my own bullshit. <laughs> so God of Wind, just default. Protector God. So this is actually him with a different colour. This is what he has by default, and in the story, that's what he was when he is Shang Tsung's minion in the Shang Tsung ending. I used it to be, this is what he looks like when he ascends to being the protector of Earthrealm. It's a bit of a Raiden-ish style, in a way. And so this is him between MK4 and Deadly Alliance when he was a protector of Earthrealm before he failed. And I, I had canon that he went into exile after that because he felt that he failed at his role. And so Raiden came back to take that position over again. Armageddon, just using Armageddon colours just based on Armageddon, and so I made it as, as Armageddon-ish as I could. White Lotus, this is just a Kung Fu style one. It tones down stuff that's not like a Kung Fu thing. Also, the Wind Run ability, that's another one the AI abuses and does nothing with. So this isn't the best Fujin in terms of what the AI can do with him. And then we have Son of Sparta, which is sword focused because he is now Virgil. What I wanted to do was use... I think it was this one, where it's basically it's got the MK4 colors, but because they changed the hairstyle, it doesn't work as MK4 or mythologies or anything. So I was like, fuck it, he's Virgil. Why not? I think it works. And our last character is Rain. So Rain's a character where I change what he has by default fairly often, because I have another because sometimes I have another skin that uses it. Uh, but sometimes I just put him into this outfit, which is to me gives off like the Cold War skins for Scorpion and Sub-Zero vibes. But this is just the default Rain. Nothing special, he's just Aquatic Assault, which is one of Johnny Cage's movies. One of his movies is called Aquatic Assault, and so it works for a guy who uses water. Then we have Retroactive Rain, because Rain was not in MK2. He wasn't even technically in any version of MK3 until Trilogy. He was just there to trick people in the UMK3 intro. But he wasn't actually in the arcade version. I think even when you get the, the arcade machine of MK1, 2, and UMK3, he's not in that either. Uh, my brother has that, actually. I would own it if I had somewhere to put it, but I don't have room for it, unfortunately. And no, I wouldn't get the Supreme variant. That was fucking cringeworthy that they did that. And it's it just looks awful. Then we have Eternal Rain. So it's a put on Rain. And this is him as the, the bastard son of Argus. This is him if he took up his... What he believes to be his birthright as the, the guy who's going to rule Edenia. Because that's his thing, right? That's what this is. One thing I don't like about this skin, though, is like where the pants stop. And there's like a gap before his boots. See, that, that to me, that, that feels like something where they were making room for a boot customization thing. I doubt they actually were, but that, that's the vibe it gives off to me. But... Yeah, so this is just him looking as, as regal as he can because he's going to take his father's mantle. And the last one I, I have in my general selection, you can see it. You can tell what it is. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. I toned down all the water stuff and made him an Assassin's Creed assassin. Requiescat in Pache. It originally was called Rainquiescat in Pache or something. But I think just calling it nothing is true. Like toning down on the puns. I mean, I've already done that. Like, already. Oh, yeah. That, that one. No, that wasn't even the last one. I forgot I did this one. <laughs> Fuck! There's more. So yeah, this is the last one. I sometimes have him look like this one. And so when I have him wearing, wearing this outfit, I'll have normal rain be in this. I'm sure you can figure out what this is supposed to be. I chose this because it's similar to the Lin Kuei logo, or as close as it can be. This is Hydro. Hydro is Sub-Zero's partner in the Malibu comics from 1994 to 5. Or did it end in 96? Either way, he was Sub-Zero's partner who appears in like two issues and is murdered by Scorpion in the tournament. I doubt it would have been that big a deal for the people who just read those comics because most people wouldn't have read those comics. But because it appeared in the free web series, it's easy to imagine people saw that and thought, I want to know more about, more about this Hydro guy. But Hydro is a diff difficult character to have because Hydro is a ninja who uses water. As you can tell by the fact that I've made a decent take on him here, that's Rain's thing. Like, I mean, he predates Rain, and yes, where there's no no arm item for some reason, but yeah, you, if you were to try and introduce Hydro now, it's like, well, he's redundant because Rain exists. Unless you found ways to really differentiate what they can do, like he's more creative with water, and Rain has like lightning as well, so he's more like a storm, and Hydro is more of a, a water bender. But <laughs> Rain is the storm that is approaching. <laughs> um, but he. Wouldn't really make any sense. I could imagine them doing Cyber Hydro, but I think if you did that, people would be like, well, what's Human Hydro like? And then you'd be stuck with <laughs> stuck trying to do that. Unless you made him more of like a tech guy who also does water stuff. But obviously for his intro, intros and victory poses, it's just the water stuff that I focused. Oh, look, he's got that kick for one of his victory poses. Like, maybe they were going to do some boot thing. He's all water-focused. Hydro boost, haha. <laughs> uh, 
But I think people know about Hydro now, mainly because MK11 gave him a bit more of a boost where he's one of the tower consumables where he'll help you out. And one last note before I show you any other rain ideas, if I have any, is Hydrophobia. That's just the, as a joke. Hydrophobia is not the fear of water. There was a game on Xbox Live Arcade called Hydrophobia, which had like kind of insane water physics. Some of the most like, extreme ones I've seen. It's like, it's two water physics, what alone in the dark was the fire physics. And it was called Hydrophobia, but I learned through looking that up. Hydrophobia is not fear of water. That's Aquaphobia. No, hydrophobia is something entirely different. Apparently, I think it has something to do with rabies or something. And I'm like, hydro. I understand by how someone can make that mistake, admittedly, calling it hydrophobia. But just so you guys know, it's not. It's not called hydrophobia. It's something else. It's aquaphobia. Hydrophobia is a different thing. Try and get that right when you are talking about this stuff. Also, this rain has like the most basic punching dagger thing. I want it to look as classic as possible. These weapons should look like something that they could have had back then. They certainly wouldn't have had something this detailed, like this one, or especially not like this one. They wouldn't have had anything like that back in like 1997 or whenever Trilogy came out. I think it was 96, actually. But yeah, they wouldn't have had anything like that back then. So yeah, I don't have another rain, but just to go back to him because I didn't discuss it last time. It's not quite the same, but in Onslaught, this is what Baraka was. The colours are slightly changed, but if you're into shirtless Baraka, that's the default in Onslaught. Sub-Zero's Cryomancer outfit has been recoloured and given a different mask for Onslaught. I don't know, I feel like the alternate costumes have less reason to have design changes like that. And it's the defaults, the ones that are actually in the story mode. I mean, unless there is going to be some kind of alternate versions of the characters showing up in the story. Which, honestly, I think Onslaught should have just been about the two timelines fighting. That would have been way cooler. But I guess they're limited by mostly MK11 assets. And that should just about do it. That is all of my customized versions of the characters and some extra ideas for you uh, let me know what you guys have like do you have make, make your own videos actually that's an, an idea shame we don't have video replies that thing disappeared like over 10 years ago so you know tell me what you, some of your customized versions are not just like random things like oh i like sony in pink or something like that like what are the cool themes you've got like maybe you themed jacks around uh, barrett from final fantasy 7 maybe you had a raid news like well i wanted shit i Raiden or Heal Liu Kang in various colours from the flashbacks or I've got a version of the character from Onslaught. Let me know what, what some of the cool themes you guys have got and uh, and tell me what you think of mine. I, I've, I think mine are pretty good, pretty based. I wish we had more more slots. And people wonder why like I hate on Netherrealm all the time is because they do shit like that. They build a game around customization of the characters and you can't use them in a bunch of modes. It was really limited early on and they, they did fix some of that, but you can't use it in story mode because of the way the cutscenes are. You can only have five versions of any character saved at once, yet they kept adding more skins to buy. And, and the rewards were all skins and you can't fucking use them unless you're constantly switching them out. And some people think that's fine. Those people, they need a slap. A big slap on the head, just like whoever's made the decisions regarding customization in this game. I slap them. Don't, don't actually slap them in real life, uh, but they do deserve a slap from someone they know who can get through to them by doing so. Because I don't want people to actually get hurt in a serious manner, uh, but I do hope the office burns down with no one in it.